how to create a GraphQL API from any REST API endpoint without having to write any code. My name is Roy, and today I'll be showing the tool rest2graphql.io. You can find this by going to your browser and finding the webpage rest2graphql.io. In here, you can see the tool for which you only need to provide a REST API endpoint. Of course, the more configuration you can do, such as providing query parameters, headers, JSON, or pet params, which we all will be exploring later on. But first, let's have a look at our REST API endpoint. For this, I always like to use the JSON placeholder REST API. It's a great API in case you want to mock something for a project. And if we'll be trying out one of the endpoints, the FM points to an example get a list of posts. And this endpoint is something we can convert to GraphQL using rest to graphql.io. Only thing we need to do is paste it in here and then press generate. This will start generating the GraphQL API based on the REST API endpoint. It's using step send under the hood. So what it will do, it will send a, rest, send a request to your REST API endpoint, convert that response to a GraphQL schema, and then deploy that GraphQL schema to the cloud so you'll be able to query it. Everything will be exposed on this endpoint, which is your new endpoint created for this JSON placeholder REST API. You can either use this JavaScript code or you can open it directly in your web editor to transform or explore the GraphQL API using Graphical. But first, let's try out this JavaScript code snippet that was generated for me. The only thing I need to do is copy paste it and then head over to an editor. In VS Code, I've already set up a JavaScript project. It's quite empty, there's not much special in there. And here I just copy paste the code that will get my information from type of code and then we get me information from the type of code GraphQL API that we just created. The only thing I need to do then is run node index.js to actually query this information. And of course I need to save it and then run node index.js. So now this GraphQL API will be called uh, using Node.js and all the data will be in here. And if I change stuff like getting less fields, maybe only getting the ID, then of course only the ID will be get from this REST API endpoint as that is what GraphQL is doing. So this is quite cool, but there's more we can explore because as I mentioned, you also have the GraphQL interface, which you can open by pressing the button to explore the Web Explorer. In here, you can find the same query that we just saw. Let me zoom in a little. And then you can run this query directly against the GraphQL API endpoint from this graphical interface. Of course, here we can also delete fields or re-add them again. So this is one very nice way to use the type of code JSON placeholder REST API through GraphQL. But as I told you, there's more we can do. If you head over to the documentation, you can find they also have an endpoint to get a specific post. So what we just did was getting all the posts using GraphQL, but instead we can also get a specific post. So let us start over and then insert this new API endpoint that gets a specific post, a post with ID one. For this, I will need to set a pet parameter. And as you can see, um, the tool already extracted it for me. The only thing I need to do is tell it using the dollar sign what the variable is. So the variable will be the ID, meaning that the GraphQL API that's get generated for me is not only able to get the post with ID one, but also all the other posts that are available on this API. If we press generate again, Stepsend will take the REST API endpoint, get the response, transform it to GraphQL, and then deploy it on an endpoint for you. Meaning that whatever is reproduced, you don't even have to set up your own GraphQL API anymore. You can just use this endpoint that we generated for you. And here you can also see that the query argument ID is there. Meaning that my code has slightly changed. So I will be opening a web editor again. This time I can actually provide an ID. So I can try out sending different values for ID. In example one, to get the very first post. So this would just get one post with ID one, but I can also try a different one, let's say 12. So this will give me the post with ID 12. And again, this GraphQL API endpoint is deployed to the cloud for me, so I don't have to worry um, about any availability of this endpoint. And there's much more you can do. So if we start over again, let's explore one of the other things. So we also have query parameters example. If we go back to the documentation of JSON placeholder, 
Let's try and find the query parameter example. So an example of this one to filter something by user ID. So let me copy paste that and put it in here. Let's close some tabs that we're not using. See what's happening here. So the query parameter, you can see we have user ID with a value of one. And then I can actually leave this part out. I just press generate. So this again will generate a GraphQL API endpoint for me based on the REST API I provided, also taking into account the query parameter that I passed to it. So with this endpoint being built, you can now see a query parameter user ID has been generated. If I open the GraphQL interface again, then this time I can query on user ID instead of ID. So let's try that by user ID. Uh, let's try one again. So these are all the posts written by user ID one. Let's see if there is a user ID 12. That looks like there isn't. Maybe just try two, let's see whatever post they've written. You can see user ID two also has written some post. And again, there's much more we can do, such as using post REST API endpoints, or also setting uh, JSON parameters, or maybe even combine path parameters and query parameters in one query. So we try over, and let's go back to, to this tool. In here, you can basically do anything. You can also set headers. So let's say you have an authorized, uh, an authorized endpoint, then the headers would be a cool thing to do. But if you just be heading over to the um, JSON placeholder documentation, you can find other things to do, such as posting a new or creating a resource, something we can do, of course. So let's try it out. Let's do this post API endpoint, do post. Add some JSON, which is the JSON we want to post to it, which is basically this part. Copy it, go here, insert it. You can see there is some issue with the JSON because probably I will need to encode it correctly. Make sure I have the quotes everywhere. Should be good now. Pretty cool, it also validates my JSON. So this way I'm pretty sure that whatever I am sending there is actually correct. So now we'll be creating a resource. We will be creating a post. For this, of course, you need to set the HTTP method to post, and then you need to define a post body. If I press generate again, the same thing will happen. Stepsend will use the REST API endpoint to get the response, translate it to a GraphQL schema, and then deploy it to the cloud. And as JSON, to place, JSON placeholder is a mock API, we won't actually be inserting any posts. Instead, it will just be mocked for you. And here you can see more query arguments have been created. Also, if I be going to the GraphQL interface, you can see more things are generated. And these are all the fields I copy pasted from here. So I have a body, a title, and a user ID. And if I will be using this, I actually need to create a mutation out of it. And then I'll be able to mutate this data. But the schema is not configured for mutation, so I'll just be using a query instead. Query variables are something I can just post to it. So I can say body. This will be a new post. Then I can also do ID, oh, user ID actually, or title. Title just do new. And then create a final one, which is the user ID, which is one verify all this and then sending it to the API. And you can see the response is there, but the data actually won't be added. So I will be going back to my GraphQL API endpoint generated for posts. It will have a different response. And as I told you, you can actually generate a, REST, a GraphQL API for any REST API endpoint. So now we've been using the JSON placeholder API, but let's try something different like the Rick and Morty API, just by copy pasting some of their API endpoints to get a list of characters in example. Just replace it, run generate again, and this time not the JSON placeholder REST API will be used to create the GraphQL API, but instead we'll be using the Rick and Morty REST API. That of course will have a different data response. And then you can see my 
Um, generated code has changed. I'm using a Rick and Morty API now. I'm getting a lot of different fields and I can also explore it again in the browser. And then something else, something is really cool that you can do is also share this page with your friends by copy pasting the URL or even posting it to Twitter as I might be doing just now. So this opens up my Twitter. It will take the endpoint I just generated and then I can tell everyone how cool it was that I actually created something with rest of graphql.io. I would just be tweeting this. And then you can find out that it appears on my timeline, telling me how cool it was I actually created a REST API endpoint. I generated a GraphQL API based on my REST API endpoint. So this is how REST of GraphQL works. I truly hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and you'll be sticking around for our next one. So make sure to subscribe to our videos and I hope to see you again soon at one of our other videos. Thank you.